award-winning food is not the reason you're going to the restaurants we're talking about today. No, for these Disney World restaurants, it's all about the atmosphere and, oh yeah, robots. Hey everybody, it's Chris for All Ears TV and AllEars.net. Have you ever dreamed of having dinner with a gorilla, a dinosaur, or a space alien? Well, you're in luck because Disney World has restaurants that feature animatronics of all those and more. And today, we're going to help you decide if a robot companion is worth the exorbitant price tag Disney puts on these unique dining experiences. And we're ranking them based on your reviews on AllEars.net. So once again, this list comes straight from the real experts, viewers like you. Coming in as the number four restaurant in Disney World to dine among robots with a combined rating of 5.85 between their two locations on Disney property, Rainforest Cafe. You can find Rainforest Cafe at two different locations in Disney World, both at Disney Springs and at the entrance of Disney's Animal Kingdom. The first Rainforest Cafe on Disney property opened on August 6, 1996, with a second location opening at Animal Kingdom on opening day of that park in 1998, and features a private entrance into the park. Known for its very extensive theming including lush, albeit fake, greenery, waterfalls, thunderstorms complete with rain, lightning and sound effects, and of course, those giant robot animals. Look out for gorillas, elephants and butterflies. Now, while these restaurants have a history on Disney property and a lot of memories for a lot of people associated with eating here on their Disney vacation, because these are owned and operated by a third-party company, these robot animals aren't going to be Disney caliber. I used to be obsessed with the Rainforest Cafe in the 90s because I'd never seen anything so elaborately themed in a restaurant before. Now, keep in mind, you will not find the same level of fluidity in the animatronics here that you'll find inside the Disney parks. And also the food is definitely not great, but there are intermittent thunderstorms that happen inside and it gets all the animals worked up and they all start making a lot of noise and it's really fun and I love it. And Breedlove hit on a theme that came up in a lot of your reviews. This place is really fun. Somehow it stands on its own next to Disney quality theming and manages to give people a fun themed dining experience, even if the food quality and level of technology aren't up to Disney standards. So let's check in with one of your reviews to get the real scoop. The Mad Hatter said, an awesome place to take the family. The service was amazing and a chef came out to review food allergies. For me, it's mango. My group were treated as guests and the jumbo shrimp were amazing. I have always heard really good things about the service at Rainforest Cafe. So maybe when you're kind of navigating those surprising rain showers, you'll actually have a really awesome wait person in the meantime. It's good to hear that people report having received Disney caliber service here, considering they are on the grounds of Disney World. None of you raved about the food in your reviews, and it's pretty much a given that the food isn't the draw for people who love this place. An anonymous reviewer had several bones to pick with their experience, saying, Ordered fish and chips, dry and way overdone, very pricey for basically bar food, table was half set, spoons were spotty, zero attention to detail. Now, while the appetizer menu absolutely reads like the bar menu at your favorite watering hole, the entree menu does offer interesting sounding options like a Cuban-style sandwich, which comes with a price tag of $19, which is pretty steep for a sandwich. They're known for a surf and turf combo that will set you back about $36. I went to Rainforest Cafe recently and I ordered what the server suggested, which was like their land and sea trio. So it had ribs, a steak and coconut shrimp and all the components were fine. The ribs were probably the best part of it, but my big issue was it was $35 for mediocre chain restaurant food when you can get much better equivalents around Disney Springs for the same price and sometimes less. When I was a little kid, I used to beg my parents to eat at Rainforest Cafe because the theming looked so much fun. But my parents, like a lot of people, always said no because they really don't like the food. And now that I'm older, starting to side a little bit more with my parents. And this is going to be the theme of this whole video. You probably aren't going to have a dream meal here, but seeing your young family members live the dream come true of eating next to a giant robot gorilla might make this place better than the best gourmet restaurant you've ever been to. This is not the spot that you want to go for a quiet, intimate date night, 
but if you are with kids who love the theming, they will be kept entertained all meal long. But then we have reviews like this one from a viewer named Spike Love, Spoke Lover, Speckle VR, uh, you choose, who said, it's an amazing restaurant. I love it. Don't listen to the haters. The food was amazing. Some people really do love the food, and that very well could include you and your family. So while your reviews may not agree on food quality, you do love the atmosphere, and that alone could easily make Rainforest Cafe a must-visit for you and your family. The pros. Though they aren't the most current, cutting edge, or even well-animated animatronics, they're still fun to have around while you nosh. If they've done nothing else, they have created wonderfully elaborate rainforest theming. While any experience can be hit or miss, we did read many reports of excellent service. The cons? Between waterfalls, thunderstorms, animals, and excited children, this place is loud. Even with a reservation, people reported having long wait times for their tables once they arrived. Some people flat out dislike the food here, but it's sort of in the TGI Fridays or Applebee's genre, so if your family loves those places, this could be a big hit. Your number three pick for dining in the presence of robots while in Walt Disney World with a rating of 6.91 is Cosmic Rays. This quick service location in Tomorrowland in the Magic Kingdom features retro futuristic decor and a stage that used to feature live performances by acts like Michael Iceberg and his amazing Iceberg Machine, who you must Google if you want to dive into some of the live entertainment that was offered here from the 70s to the late 80s. A major retheming of this restaurant took place in 1994, but it wasn't till 1995 that we Earthlings were introduced to the very reason we're talking about Cosmic Rays at all today. Arriving in Tomorrowland from Unork City on his home planet Zork, the now legendary animatronic alien lounge lizard, Sunny Eclipse. Okay, I ate here in 1995 when Sunny Eclipse was brand new and a huge deal. And in fact, this whole restaurant was a huge deal because of the very elaborate condiments bar that they had and have. But when it first opened, they had this like blue purple mayonnaise. If anybody remembers this blue purple mayonnaise they used to have in a big pump from when Cosmic Rays first opened, let us know in the comments. Who let you guys make blue mayonnaise? Mayonnaise is weird enough on its own. No windows, no doors said, Sunny Eclipse is awesome and a classic. Sometimes the specialty items here are pretty good, but the regular menu is pretty basic. If nothing on the menu sparks your interest, just grab a Cheshire cattail and bring it in so you can sit and listen to Sunny Eclipse. Well, I've got some great news for you, No Windows. Since the reopening of the Magic Kingdom last July, you can get the Cheshire cattail at Cosmic Rays as the Cheshire Cafe, where you normally get the snack, is still closed. But they're totally right. The food alone at this restaurant is not necessarily why you should eat here. Cosmic Rays, the food has improved over the years, but it's nothing to write home about. It's a pretty decent burger if you're in the mood for a burger, and I do like the spicy chicken sandwich that comes on the menu seasonally. However, the real reason to go to Cosmic Rays Starlight Cafe is jazz legend Sunny Eclipse. He sings a delightful array of jazzy space songs and has the best eyebrows since Eugene Lemmy. People loved that condiment bar. A viewer named Janet, Janet, again, you pick, explain. Ate here pre-COVID and I love the self-serve condiments for the burgers. I was a little confused when I first saw my burger due to it not having anything on it. But when we were pointed to the condiment bar, I was thrilled and you could really tailor it to your tastes. And just a note about this, while the condiments bar isn't reopened, you can still request whatever condiments you would like when you pick up your meal at one of the windows and they will be added to your tray. Amanda H. said, the food was okay and it got us through dinner. If you're hungry, have picky eaters. My husband thinks it's a budget conscious choice and food is food. Here's your place. I just ate at Cosmic Rays for the first time ever and I had a really nice time. My fries were exactly the right level of thinness and Sunny Eclipse is so funny. Like, forget Jungle Cruise skippers. Sunny Eclipse should be the taco town. Okay, so this very basic menu of burgers and chicken sandwiches will appeal to picky eaters. Since it's standard food, you can pretty much find anywhere. The prices are pretty reasonable by Disney standards. A burger and fries here costs $11.99, and you could add a fountain soda for $3.99. The pros. The Sunny Eclipse animatronic. It gives this location something unique in that you've got some free entertainment while you eat. 
It's a good menu for picky eaters. With burgers, fries, chicken strips, and mac and cheese, there will be no surprise exotic ingredients, and everyone seems to genuinely love those fries. With the prices ranging from $13.49 for an all-beef footlong chili cheese dog and a side of fries to $8.99 for a Greek salad, this restaurant is on the lower end of the Disney food prices. The cons. If you're picky in the opposite way, where standard fast food or theme park options will not satisfy your need for adventurous food experiences, you will not like this place. Everyone is dining in an open room with an animatronic telling jokes and playing music, so quiet is not a theme here. There's retro and then there's rot row. Let's face it, Tomorrowland looks retro because it actually is. And as new rides like Tron enter the arena, there will more than likely be a demand to modernize Tomorrowland's decor. And now your number two pick for dining with robots in Walt Disney World with a rating of 7.53. T-Rex. Also owned and operated by Landry's, the third-party company who owns and operates Rainforest Cafe, this restaurant takes its theming just as seriously, this time taking inspiration from the Cretaceous period going back about mm, 65 to 70 million years ago. Talk about a throwback. Here you will dine among giant robot dinosaurs and woolly mammoths, experience simulated meteor showers, and be able to visit the Octopus Bar based on the ratings. People seem to like it more than Rainforest Cafe, so let's check out one of your reviews to find out why. Disney Newbie said, our family of six, kids aged seven to 13, had a great time at T-Rex. The dino animatronics are great. A storm comes every so often, which is great fun. We were not seated in the blue room, but after walking through it, I would request that next time. All right, sorry to interrupt. We got to talk about the blue room Disney newbie mentioned, which is officially called the Ice Age Room, complete with snow. And there are several more themed rooms and even a table where you can literally sit inside a Triceratops. Sorry, back to you, Melissa. Disney newbie continued. It looked awesome. Is it the best food you can find at Disney Springs? I'm sure not, but it's all about the dinosaurs and T-Rex doesn't disappoint in that category. As long as you are dining here with the right attitude, you will love it. If you are expecting to be wowed by flavorful and inventive food and they're then disappointed, it's really on you. If you go for the dinosaurs, you will love it. T-Rex and Rainforest Cafe kind of live in the same box in my brain, which is the not a meal option box. Um, but that said, I do have a lot of friends who always want to go to T-Rex because they have really fond memories from when they were there as kids. I had a friend visiting me recently and we were walking through Disney Springs on the way to go eat at the Edison and my friend stopped and said that he wished we were eating at T-Rex instead. Now I explained to him that he would be very disappointed with the food quality once we were actually inside, but there is something very appealing about the outside decor of this building and the theming in general, even more so I think than the uh, Rainforest Cafe just across the way with its really impressive erupting volcano. And there is something about the theming of this place that inspires more enthusiasm than Rainforest Cafe in your reviews also. Carly Marie 33 said, the theming of this place is like no other restaurant I've ever been to. It is beautiful and super cool. This experience is similar to Rainforest Cafe, but better theming overall. But also warned, the lightning storms actually made a couple of children in the place scream and cry. And that's a good warning for parents of children who are sensitive to light and sound effects. T-Rex is not somewhere I'd recommend to most people, but there is a caveat, and that's if you've got little kids that are obsessed with dinosaurs. They're not gonna care that the food's generic. They're gonna freak out because they're eating chicken nuggets under a T-Rex, and you're gonna be the coolest parents ever. The pros, awesome dinosaurs. Let's face it, any age group loves dinosaur theming. Slightly better food quality than at its sister restaurant, Rainforest Cafe. A number of your reviews mentioned having felt well taken care of by the wait staff, and this is great news since it's on Disney property, but not owned and operated by Disney. The cons? You get much better food for the same or less money in Disney Springs, and even in the parks and resorts. It's a loud environment with events that may scare some children. The theming is really excellent unless you are one that doesn't like immersively themed restaurants, and if you are in that group, you probably want to explore other options. And finally, your number one pick for dining among robots in Disney World, coming in with a rating of 7.63, Oga's Cantina. 
This is the newest of the robot dining experiences by 11 years, and this place is truly incredible. The entire room is alive with Imagineering, as evidenced by the regular power failures that happen inside and the cast member's ability to start it up again. But it still wouldn't have made our list today if it weren't for the inclusion of our dear old friend, Captain Rex. He is back from the original Star Tours ride as DJ Rex. Like all pilots do when it's time for a career change, they become DJs and Rex is thriving over there at Oga's and maybe that's why this place tops your list. Andrea J29 said, this place is so much fun. It really does have that cantina vibe to it. Rex from Star Tours is back as a DJ and he plays iconic Star Wars tunes. Every so often the bartenders interact with the music. There are so many cool details embedded into the cantina. I love Oga's Cantina. You got DJ Rex spinning the beats to infinity and beyond. You got drinks that make your mouth numb. You got blue wine. You've got super cool but really expensive souvenir cups that you're gonna scoff at but then you're probably gonna shell out the cash for because you've had so many great memories with DJ Rex while you're in there. It's like a college bar where you have to dive bar but you're in space the whole time. It's super, super fun. I love Oga's Cantina. People really seem to love this place with a level of enthusiasm we haven't heard about with other establishments we've discussed today. But that doesn't mean every reviewer was impressed. Maya said in her review, Nothing here was too impressive. I was entranced by the look of the place, but not so much the food. I was incredibly disappointed with the food they had to offer. I would rather eat off the planet. Does she mean she wants to eat off the ground or like in space? Oga's Cantina is really cool, but... This is controversial. There's a part of me that's always a little bit disappointed. It's a lot smaller than you want it to be, and it doesn't look anything like the cantina that's in the actual original Star Wars films, which is what my heart wants. So when you tack that on to the fact that the drinks are like crazy expensive, part of me always leaves feeling like a little bit chipped. And a lot of your reviews mention how crowded it can get. This won't be the case if you go right now because of social distancing protocols, but it is something to consider for the future. Prior to the parks reopening, I know one of the big complaints about Oga's was the lack of space. It was not at all unusual for a party, two to three different parties to get seated at a teeny tiny table to together, which is not for the socially anxious. But while I thought I would enjoy the social distance protocols that kind of kept people more spread out, I actually find that it takes away a bit from the overall atmosphere. I think that Oga's really benefits from being a kind of crazy space party, and it's definitely a little bit different now that you are experiencing social distancing protocols. So Morgan actually thought being crowded there was a good thing because it added to the atmosphere. All in all, people generally really like this place. Like all of our restaurants today, this spot is not known for its amazing food. In fact, it's unfortunately notorious for having the worst charcuterie board that literally includes string cheese and pork rinds, as well as galactic jello shots. I am not making this stuff up. It is, however, known for the amazing experience it provides guests. So in that sense, it sounds like this does deserve to be at the top of the list. This place is also more adult oriented, which is something to consider. We hear it referred to as a bar a lot. So while they do serve food and children are allowed in, this is not the family centric robot restaurant experience you'll get with the other three establishments we discussed. There's also typically a 45 minute time limit since the cantina has such a low capacity. So you may have time for only one or two drinks and a little bit of strange, maybe bad space food. It's up to you to decide if working hard to get a reservation for a spot that's either super crowded under normal circumstances or an experience that's compromised by the lack of crowds because of the current social distancing protocols. Molly has made a ton of videos showing both how things used to be and what they're like now since the phased reopenings, so be sure to keep up to date here at All Ears TV and at allears.net so you can get an idea of what things will be like when you're visiting. The Pros this is the newest and most elaborate in terms of art direction and technology of the four restaurants we discussed today. If you have fond memories of Rex from Star Tours, you're in luck because he's back and better than ever as the resident DJ who is truly out of this world. People had great things to say about the cocktails and mocktails at this restaurant, and you can only get them here. Space charcuterie may not be on the top of everyone's list, but a cocktail that makes your tongue numb? Well, that's something you've got to at least try once. The cons. 
This is generally not a casual reservation to grab. You will want to reserve a spot early or try your luck at a same-day reservation in the My Disney Experience app. Much fewer people are allowed in per day right now, so an already competitive reservation has become that much more so. In general, this place has very limited seating and a lot of standing room only tables and bar space, and you may find yourself standing for the duration of your visit. If you're traveling with a group that includes children, there are places you can go that will cater to them a lot more than this place does. It's possible that the sophistication of the theming and technology will be lost on them, and they definitely won't get any nostalgia from seeing Rex. So what do you think of this list? Was your favorite place to eat next to a robot ranked fairly by your fellow viewers, or do you feel like they got it all wrong? Got a robot you love to dine with? Let us know in the comments. And then head over to allears.net and leave your reviews for everything Disney Parks related. Hotels, restaurants, rides, restrooms. Well, maybe not restrooms, but whatever you want to review, you can do it there. You have the power to change this list right now by leaving your own review. And who knows, your opinion may be included in a future episode. If you like this video, please go ahead and click on that thumbs up. Be sure to stay tuned to All Ears TV and All Ears.net for more Disney news. Follow us on Instagram at All Ears Net. New to the channel? Check out our other All Ears videos right here and please subscribe to All Ears Net. You clang that little notification bell and you will immediately get notified when we post a new video. This is Chris for All Ears TV. See you next time.